this is Glenn Howard, and I'd like to welcome you to my Master Critique Project presentation of Cloud Atlas. And in order to critique this film properly, we're going to be describing, analyzing, interpreting, evaluating, and engaging it through the five-step critical process. Now, Cloud Atlas is a film adaptation of David Mitchell's novel, which also bears the title of Cloud Atlas. It was released in the U.S. on the 26th of October in 2012 and was directed by several directors, of whom were Tom Twyker, Lana Wachowski, and Lily Wachowski. You'll recognize the later two from their work in the Matrix trilogy. And how um, Cloud Atlas works as both a novel and a film is it relies on multiple characters to be portrayed by a single soul, but in the case of the film's adaptation, it's using multiple actors to portray multiple characters across a single soul. And looking at the next step, which we're going to be analyzing how this works, is there are six main characters across that one protagonist soul, so the main soul of the story, and those characters are in chronological order, Adam Edwig, Robert Frobensher, Louisa Ray, Timothy Cavendish, Somni451, and Zachary, and they are influenced by the artifacts of their previous reincarnations. Frobensher, for example, discovers Edwig's journal, and Louisa Ray discovers Frobensher's musical composition, The Cloud Atlas Sextet, in a record shop, and Cavendish reads her manuscript Louisa Ray's Half-Lives, uh, the first Louisa Ray mysteries, while he's on the run from the goons of Dermot Hoggins. So the film finds a way to interconnect these souls through the Nissan sin that they share. And in interpreting Cloud Atlas, I'm going to be referencing an academic journal article from Gao Ting. This is an article of uh, the Journal of Religion and Film, Volume 44, Number 1, and this is a picture of her right here. So according to Ting Gao, this is what she had to say. As the article has tried to argue, it is the belief in modern human values, self-identity, social justice, democracy, and global ethics that points to a new direction for a collective humanity in the film version of Cloud Atlas. More so than the book, the film has used these humanistic ideas as the basis of its vision and so its use of Buddhist concepts can only be understood in this context. Now, in our evaluation of Cloud Atlas, we're going to be looking at an article by Henry Barnes of The Guardian, who reviews films, and this is his article from September 9th of 2012. So according to Henry Barnes of The Guardian, the film adaptation of Cloud Atlas is at its worst when it has multiple actors attempting multiple portrayals, while with makeup and prosthetics not being enough for an audience to continue suspending their disbelief. And to quote directly, again, this is an attempt to relate the message that all human beings are essentially the same, which would work if the transformations didn't look utterly alien. So he is arguing that this approach to showing the multiple souls across multiple timelines is a bit tacky in the film's portrayal of it. So in engaging with the film, while Cloud Atlas takes its ranks high up the cultural skyscraper in terms of accessibility, it rightfully risks sitting lower due to the film's execution of David Mitchell's ideas, which take a significantly different approach from his novel. Personally, I believe this novel might have been better adapted as a TV series due to its sheer complexity, and I understand the change in narrative structure and themes needed to reach a sub-three-hour runtime, yet it's a logistic success that this adaptation works as well as it does. In the end, it's no replacement for Mitchell's original novel. And in conclusion, I'd like to end with a quote from Adam Endwig. This is both in the novel and to the film in an extent, but here's the full quote from Mitchell's novel. My life amounts to no more than one drop in a limitless ocean, yet what is an ocean but a multitude of drops? <laughs>